welcome back to another Mermaid Monday where we talk about everything mermaid. So today we are going over the different types of tails and which one would be best for you. On a quick side note, I did start a blog recently. You can check it out in the link below. I did do a blog about this same topic. So I've actually tried on a numerous amount of tails. There's only a couple that I have not and will never try. Um, we'll get to those last. Those are the kind of dangerous ones that people always talk about. Um, those are the ones I highly would not recommend, but we're gonna start off with the nice little educational ones first. So my first recommendation for a tail would always be a nice fabric tail. These are like a starter fabric tail, the spandex, polyester swimsuit material type ones. These are usually Fin Fun, Magic Tail, Sun Tail, those kind of brands where they have like a smaller monofin and then the fabric goes over it. They are the most affordable one. Those are the easiest to carry, easiest to keep up with. Those are like a great starter tail. Um, depending on where you're swimming, depends on if I actually recommend these kinds or not. If you are swimming in a pool, these are perfect for you. These are also great for kids because kids are always growing. So these will like be easily replaceable as time goes on. They're more of like a pool toy kind of a tail instead of like an actual free diving, swimming in good depths kind of tail. If you are swimming in like the open ocean, like I do, or like the springs, I don't really recommend the types of monofins that come in the fin fun as much because they are a little bit more difficult to swim with, but they are easy to take off in a case of emergency. I know that Mertail is currently making a tail that fits the Linden monofin. These are actually a lot better if you're swimming in like open waters. Those are the ones that I would recommend for those types of swimming. So I would do like fin fun for pool, maybe a Mertailer guppy for open waters. There's a couple of different tail makers who make custom skins for the Mahina monofin, including Vancouver Mermaid and I know Swimtails does. There's been a little bit of controversy and bad luck with Swimtails, so definitely do your research before you purchase because there has been a couple of problems with them. But they are still an option. I see that they've been kind of getting back into it. We'll see where that takes us. That's a whole other tea for another day. So like to go up from the starter tail is the neoprene scuba knit tails. These are like the Finfolk Fabrics and Mertailer Wenzies. Mertailer currently makes his own silicone monofin um, for these tails specifically. These won't really fit any other monofin whereas the Finfolk Fabric tails do fit multiple different kinds of monofins. There's a list on their website. I can link that below. For swimming wise, these take a little bit more experience because of the bigger types of monofins and the bigger flukes. Uh, I know Mer Taylor has like a smaller one and then he has a bigger one. He just released an even bigger one now. So there's some at all different levels that you can work up to if you need to. Practice always makes perfect. So make sure you practice with your monofins first before you get into the full tail. These require a little bit more of an experienced swimmer because there is a little bit of a drag and the Finfolk ones, I haven't fully tested the Mer Taylor Wednesday tails yet. I have one still coming, but at the time of recording this video, I have not received it yet. So I cannot say if the Fantasy Fin 2 or 3 has a whole lot of drag or not. I don't imagine it would because it is the full fin. It may have like a little bit just because of the silicone in it, depending on where you're swimming. If you are in fresh water or pool water, this fin will give you enough power to swim gracefully. You'll swim beautifully. There shouldn't be any hard problems swimming in this monofin. Um, I have swam in the Fantasy Fin 1, and from what I can tell is Swimming in the ocean, I need a bigger fluke with more power than the one. So hopefully the two is better. I will do a full review on that later on once I've actually tested it out. Or I'd say this is like an intermediate kind of mermaid. You've had your practice, you wanna get a nicer tail. These are a great option for you without fully jumping into silicone. Cause silicone is sometimes overrated. 
The neoprene scuba knit tails are easier to transport than silicone, a little bit more to transport than a basic fabric tail. Sometimes they can fit into a carry-on depending on the monofin itself. With the fin folk, I would recommend folding them as minimal as possible because once you have a crease in the vinyl inserts, that crease stays for a good while until you can get it out. The Mertailer ones do not have creases because it is all silicone, but they do fold up. So they are easier to travel with because they are light. And they are easier to carry than silicone. And they still look really pretty. These are like the best travel tails that you can get. I personally will be using mine as more of a travel tail or swimming for fun or if I have a photo shoot that I wanna do, but it's kind of a difficult place to get there, it's a little bit of a hike, I will take these neoprene scuba knit tails because they are just as pretty as silicone sometimes and easier to carry. So now we're gonna go into medical grade silicone tails. These kinds of tails are the most popular of the silicone tails. I say medical grade because there is like a me medical grade and then aquarium grade. They are different. I can get into that in another time. I did do a blog post on this, so I will link that down below as well. With silicone, these are the most expensive option. They are the heaviest option. They take a lot of work to put on and to keep up. The maintenance for these are a lot. These are the like big dog tails. This is more of like a professional use kind of a tail. I would not recommend a silicone tail for a hobbyist kind of mermaid because they are so much to keep up with. If you want a silicone tail, that's fine. But just know, they are a lot of work to get into. They are a lot of work to carry. They are a lot of work to transport. They are a lot of work to clean. They are a lot of work to just dry and store. They are work and you have to put that effort in. There's some mermaids who will go buy a silicone tail for their first tail, realize that they are a lot of hard work and they take a lot of effort and then they hardly ever use them. They sell them off and they stop being a mermaid because you know it was just too much. That's why I always recommend starting with fabric, then the scuba knit neoprene, and then the silicone because the silicones are a lot. When it comes to silicone, they usually range like around $3,000 or so. There's some companies that offer them for less. We'll talk about hybrids next. I'm talking about full silicone tails. These usually start around $2,000 to like $3,000 and they can go up to even $10,000. Finfolk just released a tail that was completely bedazzled out in gyms and it was $9,000. Granted, it is beautiful, but that's a lot of money for a tail, and I'm sure they put a lot of work into that tail. So, silicone is some of the most expensive tails out there. They're the heaviest. They usually range anywhere from like 25 pounds for a small tail with not a whole lot of silicone in it to like 55 pounds. I've even had some that weigh like 60 pounds. My full green silicone tail that I used to have which is still for sale by the way, is just currently in the states. It is 45 pounds, very thick, so it won't rip as much as like a thinner silicone tail will. And it has a very large fluke. The cool thing and the appeal of silicone is the texture to it. The texture for silicone feels great, it's amazing. They feel super realistic and fish-like. They're also easier to dry if you can air them out. If you can hang them up to dry, they usually only take like a couple hours, whereas fabric will take like a day or so to dry because they don't have fabric. The water just has to drip out and get out of the flute. If you do not air out your silicone tail while it is wet, it will grow mold. You do not want mold because that will damage your tail and that can be bad for your health in general. So it's important to give your silicone the proper bath um, using like, sometimes people use vinegar, sometimes people just use soap water. Just make sure you clean out your tail. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more about hybrid tails. Now these are silicone on the outside, some form of fabric on the inside. 
Some silicone tails are lined with fabric. These usually are a cheaper option because it is less silicone to produce. These are like the Mer Taylor Spellbound tails because it's full silicone. The flutes are full solid silicone. There's no monofin inside of it. However, it is lined with the neoprene, so I'm going to group the Spellbound in with this category. It can be debated that it is a full silicone tail with a lining, just as some makers do spandex lining. But I'm, I'm going to, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to group it in with the basics because it has a line of, I believe it's scuba knit, scuba knit or neoprene on the inside of it. He also used to make a basic tail, which Murafins has now started making. I do not recommend him for a multitude of reasons. We will get into that another day. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will tell you and link you to the terrible reviews. It's a 50-50 chance. But he started making them. Um, Taylor has his Spellbound and then Made by a Mermaid has hers. She makes and then there's a couple other mermaids who make a hybrid kind of a basic silicone tail. These I personally prefer more than sil full silicone because they are easier to get into. Although once they are wet, it's a little bit harder to get into just because it like when neoprene or scuba net gets wet, it's a little bit difficult to get in. But I can get in without any kind of lubricant. Like with a silicone tail, you need lubricant. With a hybrid tail, you do not. I usually just wet my feet to get them into the monofin and I am good. I can pull that thing right on up. So I can get dressed almost anywhere. It's a lot easier to get into. They swim like a silicone tail. The dry time is a little bit longer than silicone because it has the fabric on the inside that has to dry as well. These tails are like a pretty much a combination of all the good things about silicone and all the good things about neoprene and scuba knit. I personally like to use this one as a professional tail as like birthday parties and such. That's my personal preference. Other people can use the Fenfold fabric, that's what my other girls use in the company. But if you want to use something else, that's fine. Silicone is beautiful, but it's a lot of upkeep. I like the hybrids because it's like the best of both worlds. Depending on who makes the hybrid tail, depends on if it's going to have seams or not. I know Made by Mermaid sews hers, so does Murrowfins. Um, whereas Mer Taylor blends his. So Mer Taylor has almost no seams, whereas Made by Mermaid and Murrowfins do. It just depends at the artist. So I would definitely do research on what you like and what you don't like to find which tail is right for you in that area. On to sequin and resin tails. So this is going to be like the Carriol sequin tails, handmade sequin tails, um, Hannah Mermaid sequin tails, uh, Finful resin mythic tails. These tails are usually like a scuba knit neoprene base, sometimes it's a fabric base depending on who makes it, attached to like a usually silicone monofin, however it can be like a Mahina monofin as well, I've seen that done but they are sewn on. These scales are sewn on, so that makes them a little bit more dangerous for the environment itself because these little pieces of plastic, because yes, resin is plastic, sequins are plastic, they're falling into the waterways and fish will eat them and they will not get any nutrition from it and they will eventually kind of die from eating plastic because there's already so much in the ocean it's just really bad and mermaids are oftentimes looked at as like protectors of the water and I'm not saying every mermaid has to be an ocean activist or have any kind of stance in it but we should probably take responsibility for our part and not use these kind of tails in natural waterways I think that these tails are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful I would love to have a sequin or mythic tail they are a little bit more expensive because they are sewn on, especially individually sewn on tails. They can be a little pricey, but they are extremely beautiful. I would only use these in controlled environments and pools. You know, if you're doing like a photo shoot and it's in a controlled environment, that's fine. If you're doing like a pool party, if you're doing like a little photo setup thing as a mermaid for a gig, those tails work great for that. The upkeep for these tails is a lot. You have to like sew on scales as they fall off because these scales will fall off. 
There's been people who have reinforced their own like mythic scales or reinforced their own sequins onto the tails and have glued them individually down. And yes, it helps, but it doesn't stop them from coming off. There's some springs in Florida that have banned mermaid tails altogether because people could not be responsible with their tails and that they were shedding into the waterways. It's just really important that us as not only mermaids, but as humans and adults, for the most part, take responsibility for our actions and what we choose to wear in the water. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I'm never going to put down somebody for doing what they do. So like if I see a mermaid in a sequin tail, I'm not going to tell her to get out of the water. But I do feel that we should take responsibility. So next up is the tails that I don't recommend. So this one is a latex tail. These, you can develop an allergy to latex. It has happened before. Lots of people are allergic to latex. And some people may not even know it. So like if you're out at the beach and kids start touching you, a kid can have an allergic reaction and that's just not a good thing. Granted the allergy for latex is about the same as, oh man, my battery's dying. Oh no. The allergy for latex is very minimal in the major population, so it shouldn't be too bad. They don't really last as long as like silicone or fabric does. They do get like dry and sticky in like the heat it just, they're not very good tails. I don't really recommend them. That's why most makers stopped making them. And finally, we have caulking, which is aquarium grade silicone. This is not regulated by the FDA and can be very harmful to you as a wearer and to the maker themselves. Breathing in those kinds of chemicals, as well as touching them, interacting with them is very, very dangerous and should only be used in very minimal small amounts. You can use caulking, let's say if you have like a rip in your monofin and you need to fix that heel strap, that amount is okay as long as you're in a well ventilated area, but I do not recommend to make or wear a full tail in these. There's plenty of research to back this up. I will link that down below. I also have that mentioned in the blog post. Just. I really don't recommend caulking. I can go on like a 20 minute long rant about it, but my battery is currently dying and we are out of time. So if you want to hear more about caulking, um, let me know in the comments. I will do like a video dedicated to the dangers of caulk and why you should not use it or wear it. And again, I'll link my blog post down below as usual. Make sure to follow and like all of my social media links down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you will be notified for new uploads. I will see you next Monday. Mermaid kisses and starfish wishes.